Hi again, it's Lou here from this patch of earth. And as you can see, we've just had a massive pile of wood chips delivered. So I thought it'd be an ideal opportunity for us to talk about, well, why do we get them delivered? What do we do with them? What are some of the options of what you can do with wood chips? So just to give you an idea um, of how we get them, we had a lovely arborist who has helped us by you know, chopping down some of the trees on our property in the past. And we've built up a relationship with that person. And now whenever we need wood chips, we give them a call, let them know. And if, it, if they happen to be in our area, they're usually more than happy to drop off their load for us. So one of the things is that you do have to be happy to take the whole load. They won't deliver a part load for you. Uh, so you need to have somewhere that you can put that. The other thing about it is that some people say you've got to be really careful about what wood chips you get. That hasn't been our experience. Um, people say you shouldn't have eucalyptus wood chips. The first lot of wood chips that we got, we were desperate to get them and they were actually mostly eucalypt. And we, to be honest, we've had absolutely no problem with them. So just some ideas of how you can use wood chips in your garden. There's lots of ways that you can use them, but one you might like to think of is using them to line your paths in your garden. Obviously the wood chips are gonna stop your boots or your shoes from getting muddy. They look attractive. They create a lovely habitat for worms and for the wildlife in the soil, but also um, they do really help to create that fungal environment. And it does break down over time so that it does actually enrich the soil. And any plants that you have that are close to those pathways ways are able to tap in to that network, the fungal network and also the nutrients that are created by the wood chips that are breaking down. And of course it allows the rain to go through so you're not going to have water rushing off all over your garden. But other ways that you can use it is to um, as a mulch for your trees. So just make sure that when you're putting it around your trees you do a nice really thick mulch layer of the wood chips but pull it away from the actual trunk of your trees because you don't want your tree trunks to stay wet um, because it could help your trunk to rot. So that's really important. And obviously if you've got grafted trees, you've always got to keep that graft line above um, anything that's around the trunk. So there's a couple of ideas there. The other thing that you can do is pop any um, wood chips into your compost to add carbon matter for you. If the wood chips are a little bit big, then you can run your lawnmower over them and that's going to break them down further. The wood chips that we have here, there's actually a lot of really fine matter. So uh, this is actually perfect for putting into the compost. And because it's arborist wood chips, this is a, co a combination of carbon and nitrogen because we've got the leaves um, and shoots in there as well as the trunk, okay? so really handy for popping on your compost. The other thing that you can do is just spread it all over your garden like we're about to and suppress weeds and start to create a really good growing medium. Now you can't grow into your wood chips as a growing medium, so don't, please don't plant seeds into wood chips. But once you've had them down for a while and they've started to decompose, what will happen is it creates a beautiful, thick, rich, you know, organic soil underneath. And you'll see, you know, when you pull it aside after a few months, it starts to go beautiful and dark and, and lush and rich. And you absolutely can plant into that. Even seeds as delicate as carrot seeds. If you pull away that mulch layer and get that lovely thick dark matter underneath, sprinkle your carrot seeds, pop a little bit of sand over the top and you can totally grow them in, into there as well. So don't be afraid to do that. Um, there are some fantastic videos to, so that you can learn more about this if you're interested. And I will pop um, some links up. There's Canadian Permaculture Legacy. Um, there's uh, uh, the Gardening Channel with James Prigioni. And there's also um, another one that I found recently, which is just very quick and concise. So if you like the science, but you don't want it to be too long winded, that's a really good one to find out more about what wood chips can actually do scientifically for your soil. Um, but what we're going to be doing with it today is popping it down onto the rest of our lawn in the front. We have just really, really uh, poor quality lawn in the front garden and a lot of that's due to our soil. Our soil is just grey, lifeless soil. That's our native soil. So unless we get lots and lots of regular rain, our grass is really patchy and in the summer it just goes, becomes like straw and it's really not attractive. So it's not like we're giving up something that's wonderful. The other thing is to maintain good lawn. As any of you who have good lawn would know, it takes a lot of resources. It takes a lot of water, it takes 
fertilizer, it takes, you know, perhaps using some um, weed repellents and that kind of thing, some chemicals, and we, we just don't want to do that. So that's why we're covering up the front garden. What we will do is as the wood chips break down, we will plant into it, we will put some more trees in, and even as it breaks down a bit further, you can put in other types of plants as well, because I'm gonna show you that after you've had your wood chips down, it creates a really beautiful, rich soil underneath. Now, if you are planning to use the wood chips in a similar way to us, which is to cover grass or weeds and start to um, create that fungal dominated, lovely, rich soil, you really do need to use a cover on the weeds before you put the wood chips down. Ideally, something like cardboard or thick paper, things like lots of layers of newspaper does work uh, just to create that initial barrier. Um, some people also put it on top of weed matting, but I probably would uh, not recommend that. Put it on top of something that is going to break down over time. And you're going to need quite a thick layer for the first time that you do it. In many areas of our garden, we've actually done six layers of wood chips because it'll start off you know, quite high when you put the first layer down, but it actually breaks down over time and it sinks and it, it shrinks down. So you can then reapply another layer and another layer. And over the couple of years that we've been working on the garden, some areas have had six layers. So with the first layer that we're gonna put down today, you'll see that Theo's gonna put it down pretty thickly. And the thicker you put it down, the less likelihood that there will be for any weeds to come through. Now, I'm not going to tell you that if you've got really thick cooch grass, that you're not gonna have any of that come through the first time that you apply your wood chips. However, if you are persistent and have patience and use plentiful wood chips, you will be able to stop that coming through. And we've done that in our back garden. We have massive areas that have been wood chipped that have absolutely no weeds coming through. So the key is, as I said, you know, plentiful wood chips, patience and persistence, which means putting down more than one layer. So the three Ps are really, really important. And you will find honestly that over that period of time, you'll look back maybe in a year or two and you'll, you'll just be loving it. Now the first layer of wood chips that you put down, you're probably going to notice that some weeds will come through, especially if you've got things like cooch grass. Please don't be put off by this because as you layer down more wood chips over time, that's going to weaken and kill even the most persistent weeds. Now you'll also get things like clover popping up in your wood chips um, because obviously birds will drop seeds and the wind will blow seeds onto your wood chips. Now something like clover is actually a soil conditioner and improver, so if you don't mind the look of it, you can leave it there. But otherwise you'll find that um, in the wood chips, they actually seem to grow quite spindly and they're very easy to pull out because the roots are really, really long. The other thing about wood chip mulch is it's not a growing medium. So quite often you'll hear Theo and I talking about the fact that we grow in amongst the wood chips. That doesn't mean that we plant into the wood chips. It means that we pull the wood chips back and that beautiful rich dark soil that it's created underneath, that is what we plant into. So please don't use your wood chips as a growing medium because it won't be successful. But hopefully these little tips have given you, you know, some good ideas of how you might be able to use wood chips in your garden. It's really transformed our patch of earth and enabled us to grow abundantly here, which in the first year we absolutely couldn't. Things were dying and certainly not thriving due to the poor soil. So if you're in the same situation as us, give it a go. Maybe just pick a small patch to start with, give it a go and let us know um, how that goes for you. We'd love to hear your feedback. So that's it from this video from this patch of earth and I hope that you've got some ideas for using wood chips, maybe some of the things you already knew, maybe there's some new ideas here for you. Perhaps you've got other ways of using wood chips or other ideas for mulching in the garden that you'd love to share with us and we are new, we're only two and a half years into our journey so we're still very much learning and would absolutely love if you could share your ideas with us. So from Lou and from Theo and from this patch of earth, over and out. See you for now.